everyone. Welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking. My name is Heather and today we are going to do something that I have been wanting to do for a very long time. We're going to do tamales. Now they say it is a long process, a long and involved process. They would be right. It is long, it is involved, but it's easy. Yes, a lot of people don't like to spend that much. Money. That's probably why I buy them from the girl guards and the, you know, all these places that do tamales because it's a long process to make these. So this video is to show us that we can do this. Are you ready? Super excited, a little nervous, but I think it'll be good. Let's go. So in an effort to keep this video shorter, I have pre-recorded the things that I did earlier. Otherwise, this video might have been like two or three or four hours long. Yes, yes, it took me about four hours to come to this spot, but I was dealing with animals and kids and husbands and other things like meals that I needed to do in my kitchen besides recording for tamales. So um, yeah, instead, I had my video recording as I did each of the steps and I am now going to voice over those steps for you um, as we get to this point. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you want to make tamales today is you're going to want to take your pork. Um, we're going to need about five pounds of boneless pork roast cut into kind of large cubes. Um, they're probably about two inches or so. And if you have any visible fat that you can trim off, why don't you go ahead and trim that off because we don't want all of that fat in our um, pork because we're gonna get enough of it in the masa later and you'll find out why. So we're gonna put that all into a stock pot of some sort. Um, I'm using the Pampered Chef new enameled cast iron skillet here. And to that pot, we are going to add one tablespoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground cumin, six cloves of crushed garlic, one teaspoon of peppercorns, and a medium onion quarter. So we're gonna put all of that in there and we're gonna add water just to cover the meat. And it, that's probably about four quarts or so. Um, and then we're just gonna bring that to boil. So as you can see here, now we're boiling. See all that foam that is all around? We're gonna want to skim all of that foam off as it appears. Um, I only had to skim it off once or twice um, before it didn't appear anymore. So you're just gonna wanna skim that off. It just makes a cleaner broth. Now we're gonna cook this at low to medium heat for about two hours or until the meat is very soft. Now what does very soft mean? See how this meat is falling apart kind of like with my forks and I just barely have to pull it? That is perfect. And we're gonna want to remove the meat from that broth but reserve the broth because we're gonna use it twice. So reserve that broth. Next, let's move on to the chili sauce. Now I used um, California chili pods. You can get this in almost any grocery store. So this is what I'm gonna make my chili sauce out of. You can use a variety of different chilies. You can use anchos or guajillo, um, but I'm gonna use the California chili. Um, so we are gonna need about 15 to 16 of these and it's very important that we open them all up and get all of those seeds and veins out. And we're gonna discard that, but let's get everything into the pot and we're gonna wanna break it up so that they're smaller and they'll be easier to food process or blend later. To this pot, we're gonna add one teaspoon of salt and the strained pork broth that you reserved from the meat. Now, just go ahead and put that all in. And if you need to top it off with water, be sure to do that. You need all of the chilies to be covered in liquid. And I'm gonna bring that back up to a boil and I'm gonna let it boil for five minutes. At the end of five minutes, I'm gonna turn off my heat and let it sit for 30 minutes. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and get my corn husks ready. These corn husks also need to soak for about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna stick as many corn husks as I think I need into this pot, and then I'm gonna cover it with water. Now, as you can see, these husks are pretty buoyant, 
So we need to go ahead and put something over the top to get it to hold under the water. So I'm just gonna use the lid of this pot. All right, here at the end of 30 minutes, um, let's look at our chilies here. Oh, they look beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and get them into the food processor. So I'm gonna go ahead and strain out all of those chilies and put them in the food processor. We're gonna reserve that broth again, so don't throw it away. This is the key to this whole meal. Once your chilies are inside your blender, you are gonna wanna add two to four garlic cloves, depending on your taste, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and about a fourth to a half of an onion, depending on how big your onion is. And then we're gonna go ahead and start that blender, and we're gonna get that blending all together looks great now i'm going to add a little bit of this reserved broth just because i want it to be nice and sauce like but i'm not going to add too much because i want to be able to control how soupy it is and that looks about right all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to strain this now this seems like a step that you don't need to do however those the outside of those chilies are actually inedible so we're gonna strain out all of that pulp and all of the outside of that chili right now. See all this stuff? This is stuff you don't wanna eat. So we're straining that out and we're gonna put it off to the side and maybe give it to the goats. That brings us back to the masa. So let's just get right into this. Again, I've never done this before. I'm going off of, I've actually made several things similar to this so I'm kind of drawing off of those and some recipes from here and there but I have already made some adjustments to this recipe so this turns out fantastically this is my recipe I am NOT of Mexican descent but I'm hoping that this is amazing all right so inside this bowl we have two pounds of masa two teaspoons of salt and to this we are going to add three cups of melted lard melted lard now i took a video a second ago of me uh taking out that lard yeah i i had a moment i had a moment where i was like ooh, well it's kind of jiggly and lard it you know what lard is if you don't know what lard is you can go ahead and google it but I'd like to eat my food tonight. So this has been melted down. It is three cups. And remember the broth that we've cooked everything in? It's right there. It makes about five cups. You need about five cups of that broth for the masa harina. And we're ready to go. Now, you'll notice I don't have a spoon of any sort because you're supposed to use your hands. So my hands I will use and we will have some fun. You ready for this? Ah, okay, so here we go. All right, so whoops, before I start, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up that salt in there. All right, and I'm gonna make a well in the middle. I don't know, it's kind of like bread dough, we'll see, or, or something. And we are going to put our lard right in and pray to the tamale gods that this works out. Okay, ready? Whoa. Wow. You know, my hands are gonna be nice and soft after this because it'll be all, all that lard will be all inside of it. Actually, it's quite soothing. So we're just going to make sure we get all of that together. Now, I feel like that is way, more than it needs to be. But what do I know? What do I know? I've got to add some more. Um, okay, well, we're just gonna go with it. We're gonna hope that this is what we needed. The video I just watched said that you're really looking for a texture. This is perfect. This looks more like what we need. So it's possible that I just missed something there in the middle. All right, let's move back to our hands. All right, so. All right, looking great. This feels like a lot of masa, so. Hopefully, 
Yeah, I don't know. Okay, we are gonna put in half of a cup of our chili Colorado sauce. And it's gonna make your hand nice and dyed red. I actually thought about using a glove here, but you know what? I'll just have a red hand for the next three days. No big deal. Now we're gonna add some broth. So remember the broth we have? Yep, we are going to add that to our bowl just a little bit at a time. And you'll know, according to the internet, when you've had enough broth. So um, I don't know what that means, so we're just gonna go with it. And they said it could take anywhere from three to five cups of broth. Um, so we're just gonna try to recreate what I saw in lots of videos. <laughs> I love watched lots of videos over the last four days in preparation for this video. And apparently you can do this in your stand mixer, but yeah, there's no joy in a stand mixer. Actually, that's not true. I love using my stand mixer. So why didn't I do it? I don't know. Sometimes I do things that I don't even understand. Now is that time, like making tamales. All right, now I'm starting to see what some of the videos were talking about, about the consistency. The consistency is definitely changing. And uh, yeah, so that's actually kind of cool. This is actually therapeutic. So, how do you feel about 2020? Yep, me too. I don't wanna see any of that white masa. I want it to be orange because that is the authentic way of doing it, where it's orange masa, not that bland white stuff. Ain't nobody got time for bland. All right, so let's taste this. Mmm. Ooh. It's so weird that it tastes like tamale already. Obviously, uncooked tamale, um, but that has a really, really good flavor. And we'll just ignore the fact that I just put lard in my mouth, uncooked lard, whatever. So as soon as I get all of this broth incorporated in, and then we will call it good. And then I will clean up, and then we will start assembling tamales. I'm so excited doesn't take much. What gets you excited? Does cooking, I mean, if you're watching this, probably cooking gets you at least somewhat excited or at least curious. Um, do you get excited about things in your kitchen? I mean, I get excited a lot. It just doesn't take very much these days with us being at home and uh, yeah. And getting excited for new recipes and new flavors and, you know, expanding your horizons. I don't know, it's kind of fun. Now, I have a feeling that I um, got too small of a bowl. There's not a feeling, it's a real thing. I did, I got too small of a bowl. New bowl achieved. It's like a new level. All right, maybe I'll be able to work it easier. Probably. Right now in this bigger bowl, we are gonna work this dough. Man, it smells so good. The chili sauce, and the pork, the pork, I tasted the pork. Oh gosh, the pork is so good. I feel, I feel like this is a good consistency. I feel like we have come to the point of good spreads. I guess I'm gonna clean up and get 
the tamale station ready. All right, while the masa is in the refrigerator, let's mix up our meat. So this is the meat that we boiled earlier. And so we're gonna put some of the chili Colorado or the chile sauce right inside of it. It has kind of congealed a little bit because I used the broth. Um, but it will taste just as delicious and we're probably going to use the whole thing. So however much sauce your sauce made, just put it on in there. All right. Meat looks fantastic. All right, let's set that aside for a moment. Now let's deal with these corn husks. So apparently we need to take them out one at a time, dry them off and make sure they're not dirty lay out a towel here and I'll put it down and I will just dry them like this and then I'll set them off to the side and I'm probably just gonna dry about I don't know 20 of them to start with um, I'm pretty sure now that I'm looking at everything that I did way too many or I'm gonna be up till midnight one or the other I don't know it's probably why they say to have a whole bunch of people doing this because then it doesn't take you so long. So, learn from my, my mistakes here. Get a friend. Do tamales with a friend. By yourself is fine, but it's gonna take you a hot minute. All right, I'm super worried about this process, but we're just gonna, we're gonna go with it. So, I'm gonna use a bench scraper and what they said was to take your dough and put it on your counter and that's how you kind of learn how to scrape against your masa or against your corn leaf. So um, this is my first time doing this, but I think I'm doing okay. I think this is okay. It looks like a good consistency. So let's just get started and hold our breath. All right, so there are two sides to the corn husk. There is a smooth side and a rough side. You want to put your masa on the smooth side. So go ahead and take your masa and then we're gonna start about halfway down and we're just gonna put it on and then we're gonna grab some more and just bring it down and hope that we're doing it right. I don't know, it looks pretty good. What do you think? My first one, ta-da! All right, so we're gonna set that off to the side and then we're gonna do our next one. Okay, so if you don't have a bench scraper, apparently you can use a spreader. So I thought I would try it with a spreader just to see what I think. Make sure I have the soft side and you just do kind of the same idea, spreading it downwards until you have it spread all over. Yeah, this one works too, but the bench scraper definitely works better. So if you have a bench scraper and you know how to use it, definitely use the bench scraper. All right, they also said you could use a spoon. So same idea, they, who's they? All of them, all the they's. You can just spread it like a spoon cross so those will work but I do prefer the bench scraper it gives a much more even coating of the masa oh this is a little small one but that's okay that's okay we'll do it anyway all right let's watch the rest of these and fast forward shall we All right, so we'll clean that up and now we will get to filling these things. So, we take the spoon that we didn't use and we are going to get a little bit of this meat and we are just going to put this meat right here and then we are going to fold over once and fold over, I think, oh gosh, now I don't remember. I think so, fold over once, and then one more time, and then 
that's it tamale is done so let's go ahead and set it right there and we'll do another one i hope i did that right i must have watched 50 videos so i hope i'm doing it right if i'm not doing it right you can tell me in the comments but i hope i am all right here we go again fold over and over one more time and then fold down Ta-da! that makes me pretty happy Okay, here's one of those little ones. All right, let's enjoy this on fast forward while I fill them. Phew, okay. So now I have my tamales. Now let's get them in the pot. So here I have a steamer basket. Let's see if I can show you a steamer basket in the bottom, a piece of foil wrapped around the middle of the steamer basket, and then foil around the outside. And that is so that when I stack them into this pot, they don't fall into the water because we definitely do not want them to go into the water. How we're going to stack them is we're going to stack them face up all around the outside of the steamer. And hope that they all stay in so all of the meat side is face up look at how cute the little ones are they're so cute that'll be like midnight snack all right so I want a full basket so I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple more and then I'll cut right back to this and the last one for the pot. I have quite a few here. So basically you just wanna make sure that all of your tamales are in and that the lid can close tightly because you don't want any of the steam to escape. So I'll show you a trick on how we're gonna ensure that no steam escapes. All right. Now I'm gonna take another piece of foil and even though I'm going to use a lid, I am going to tuck the foil over the top of the tamales because then the condensation will hit the foil and go back down into the pot because we definitely want them all to steam for the whole time and we want to lose as the least amount of water as possible. Okay. Now we're going to get this on the stove. We're going to start it steaming. It needs to steam for an hour and a half. So I'll get it going. I'll see you back here in an hour and a half to show you the results. See you soon. All right, we're back. And um, I have a confession to make. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I have already eaten two of these. <laughs> my husband has already eaten two of them and my son has already eaten two of them. So I will eat another one for you because they are that good. I don't want to toot my own horn at all, but I super enjoyed these. My husband said that they are not super dense like some of them can be and that there's flavor throughout the whole thing. Let me just show you our beautiful tamales. So um, as you can see here, let me just get one really close to you. As you can see, it looks like a perfectly shaped, well, as perfect as this white girl can do um, tamale and to open a tamale you just unwrap it and take off the paper and let me just tell you when I first took my first bite of this I should have been recording but I just couldn't wait it was one of those teeny tiny ones and Sorry. So you're gonna get my second reaction, but I will cut into it, let you see the inside. Let me get close to this camera here. All right, look at that. That was your 360 view. All right, and we'll cut into it. Cuts just like a regular tamale, cause it is a regular tamale. And look at that. Perfect amount of masa and perfect amount of filling. I mean, I don't want to say that this is perfect because there's always room for interpretation and for growth, but this is pretty good for my first tamale and doing it by myself with no instruction. Oh, well, okay. 
There were a lot of people instructing me because I watched a lot of videos on tamales just to make sure I wasn't gonna make a fool of myself because I do that once in a while. So here I am again taking one for the team eating my tamale for you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Is this something that you think you would try with a friend? With a friend? Trust me. I mean, it's it was an adventure. It was an undertaking for sure. Right now it is 11 p.m. I started at 1 p.m. So I have taken 10 hours to do these and I'm not even done yet. That is almost done. But you know what? This was worth it. This, you know what? This was worth it. This flavor and the texture and the beauty of making my own tamales. I love tamales. So this is a win. This adventure has me pumped. So that's all I have to say. I mean, like, I am pleasantly surprised. I know I say that a lot, but sometimes things flop, but this really, this is fun. So I'm probably gonna bring some of these over to Thanksgiving and uh, have a great time sharing this with other people and getting their feedback, deciding what they think I could do to make them a little better, but I don't know. I think they're pretty darn good. So I know my techniques can get better because obviously, uh, hello, I, I this first time doing it, so I learned a lot as it go, and that's why I do this channel. Um, I enjoy learning and adventuring in my kitchen, and I don't mind sharing my shortcomings with the rest of the world. So anyway, that's it you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and maybe make yourself some tamales. All right, you guys, until next time, keep your adventures real. Golly, bye.